have to tell you that it's a joy, a privilege, and it is wonderful to be with the family. They told me to speak of it minutes. So I hope I can tell you, and he already said what our home is. Father Wasso was a very smart gentleman and very handsome. He always said, oh poor little baby, oh poor little me. He teaches us not to feel poor little of me. And I saw with all my friends and all my family and all my brothers and sisters that live in the United States right now, that that's I think the philosophy. Life is tough, but we learn to conquer them. In the house, they teach us to work in a group, to love each other, to share, always look to who you can help. And I think that's why we became a success. Success. All of us, we are with our families, giving a good example, or the best example we can. And we all know that somebody is up there watching us. In the house, they told us, we oh, you are special. And I used to be very mad at the nuns. Oh yes, we are very special. And, you know, when I was little. And now, the more, the older that I get, I see in every one of my brothers and sisters that we have something very unique. We have the love, the acceptance, the energy to say we can do it. If we stay together. So thanks to God, because He is our priority. If we follow the Ten Commandments. We are okay. So that's what Bikinians are. We love each other, we forgive each other, because sometimes we fight. <laughs> and his father was to say, you have to say sorry. And he didn't say it too much, but he lived that. And again, through example, we believe in his um, wishes. And I said, and I almost guarantee you, every Bikinian that is here, believes and knows what I'm saying. Life has been very hard, but life is beautiful because we have the education, we have the confidence, we have the values that we know who we are. And I'm so thankful for that. Because I succeeded in my life thanks to what they gave me over there. At that time I didn't understand it, but now when I leave it, it's no words to thank Father and all the volunteers and all of you that are here that know me, Mr. Crump. That was one of my angels when I went to Washington. I'm one of the old, old pickings. I was They were 30 when I got there. I lived almost all my life, half of my life, 28 years. But now that I'm out, I still belong to the house. I never feel lonely. I never feel like I'm lost because I know I have people that love me. And that's my home, brothers and sisters and the benefactors. I do have my grandpa and my grandma name, people that are very close to me, the Eileen Sandels, all these families, they are not living with me, but I always see them with a good example. And I love it. I love that I had that opportunity to be surrounded with good people. And they are helping me to keep being good to others. Um, I'm one of the 11 brothers and sisters. Uh, we came in 79. Father was on game and hugged my father. I was probably five. I don't remember. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you, Father, to all of you. Father Rick, Brian Hart, Frank Kraft. I really want to say thank you. What do you say about a man with so many actions and a few words? Father Watson wasn't a man of many, many words. I speak a lot, that's why. So, I'll be very brief. But I remember what Jose was referring to when our father came. He was only a baby, basically, when he came to MPH. And um, our father basically was in the wheelchair. And, um, Remember very well, we were talking about my sister Leticia, she was there. And uh, he basically jumped out of the wheelchair when Father Watson came to us. He was a man who just had my father, and I saw the comfort of my father's eyes. You know, my father was very aggressive and so forth, but still, we loved him. He was there for us. He never abandoned us when my mother died, but he was there, and we saw that tenderly love mother and Father Watson. He was a father. We know it from the beginning. We just felt so secure, no matter what. 
He was there, he gave me a good life once in a while, and even though he believed in us, he made me believe in myself, in my brothers. You know, a very compassionate man, very caring, very loving. And um, I wasn't very good at, at singing, I never made the dance group in Megatlan. They kicked me out every time because I was just singing. So <laughs> not even singing, horrible singing. But later on, maybe we can sing a song called Viejo, mi querido, viejo. It's a beautiful song. We're going to sing later on tonight. It's a very special song we can all take with us. And always it reminds me, Father Rick, the work he's doing in Haiti. He's an inspiration with his wonderful people over there, friends. I mean, it's just really very unique. And we all, you know, the national directors, from Rebuca Honduras, I mean, we all did our best because that's what Father Watson wanted. He wanted the best for his sons. We tried to give the best to the, our hermanitos menores, our little brothers and sisters. There are many wonderful people who care and believe in EH. You know, many. The family, the Kara family, Reinhardt, who are giving their family, Brother Rick. I want you to stand up and give a very special applause with your kids when they really love you and really say thank you. We don't expect the kids thank you, but they say thank you with the things that they do good. That's all, that's all we ask. Many kids will come, how are you, how are you, and give you the gracias, muchas gracias for many don't. But I learned in Honduras that they give a special applause. We'll do the applause, a special applause. La, 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 la aplauso de la lluvia, the rain applause. So we do one finger, two finger, for Father Ray, for everybody here, for everybody who's still believes in MTH, in the love, in the legacy of Father Watson, what he left us. We have to keep united as one. Beside the difference, what's happening in MTH and so forth. The world is crazy today. We have, we're living in a world that is materialistic. The world, I mean, you get the best chair. And I remember Father Watson, he told me a lesson. You know, when I was in, in Galen, living here in Marcos, I, was, I went to high school here in Marcos, I in Tempe. And he told me a lesson. Alfredo, go to your locker. And I used to be, Raul Duran was living with us, so he's Raul. And he said, go to your locker and get me the best shirt. I used to go under the ground, work illegally, cutting grass when I was going to high school. But I did it in the weekends to have extra bucks. And I bought a nice shirt and one. And I had it on so, and he thought he was going to take a picture with me, get it done. No, he gave it to me, he took it with him. I guess he, took, he brought it to one of the homes. And to me, that's a really lesson that he taught me to share it, giving and conditioning, no matter what. So why don't we stand up and give a very special bless to NPS, to everybody who believes in, in the love of Father Watson, the legacy. Stand up. We we'll start with one finger. Stand up. One finger, two fingers, three fingers, cuatro fingers, five fingers. They said two minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> when uh, Wilkie, who's sitting here, and Evans, who's sitting over there, when they started working with the people on the street, uh, every morning they would come and give a, a report of what happened the day before. And then we started going into the rains. And uh, what was really remarkable to me was, I'm sure they had passed these people a thousand times on the street, and they were just nobody to them. But now that they were to become part of their life, uh, those people really mattered to them. The, the thing that happened was, with the rains, uh, you know, even in tropical countries, when it rains, it gets cool. And when you're wet, it's cold, when you're sitting in wet clothes. And of course, these people, once they got wet, they were wet and stayed wet and they stayed cold. And it was really bothering them. And one day, we spent the whole morning report trying to figure out how can we do this? Because if we, they, you know, I suggested we buy full raincoats and they said, no, they'll be stolen by, and then, you know, finally they just, you know, we decided on shower curtains, you know, but it, you know, but the point of the story was that the people that they used to just walk by now were in their heart. In other words, the problems of those people were bothersome to them. They became their problems. I think this is the point of, of, of both uh, Chela and Alfredo and Jose Luis. In other words, the kind of relation that they felt with Father Wasson and so many others is a full heart relation, you know, and it's waking up in them and it's really nice to see it. And this is one of the obediences that I'm talking about. It has to be an obedience to the heart for it to work. If there's no obedience to the heart, it won't work. 
we have to open our heart to the other person, not as the powerful one, but as the brother or the sister, as the equal, who together are trying to find our best way through this very difficult life towards eternity, which is God's wish for all of us. All the blessings along the way, all the ways that we can lighten the load for each other as we go along. So this is enunciated by these examples and a value that we certainly have to preserve. Okay, who's next? We're glad to hear from you. Please come on up. Good morning, my name is Mary Jo West and I work at St. Vincent de Paul Charity downtown, work with the homeless every day. But for 20 years, I was a television news reporter and anchor and uh, I had the privilege in 1992 to do an interview with Father Lawson that they were going to use at this wonderful but high class fundraiser at the Camelback Inn, which is just right over here. And maybe some of you were there. It was the, the night that uh, Mr. Rogers, the television uh, person that, you know, talked to children, and uh, Joseph Campanello, a famous actor. And it was, well, I went and got to interview Father Watson, and it was one of the greatest days of my life, and I took a very good professional uh, photographer, videographer with me. And we got back, and the video was great, but there was only one problem that they were going to show it that night at the banquet. There was no sound. And that doesn't sound like a big deal to you, but when you are in this business, you know, you just want to just lay down and die. We have no sound of Father Watson, but he was in Yarnell. And so anyway, I, they told me, the MPH told me that I had to call him and ask him to come back, and he wasn't feeling well. So I called him, and I was just praying so hard, please don't yell at me. And he couldn't have been more gracious. And in fact, the second interview was better than the first interview. And uh, I just remember his eyes and his laughing eyes, and he was also so calm. So uh, finally, I'll just say that my church here in Phoenix, uh, we want to start more international kind of giving. And thanks to Teddy Lepone. Teddy, where are you? Um, we are in the process, hopefully, of sending uh, me and one other person to Haiti to help tell your story. And then after that, hopefully, to every single country where NPH is, and so just thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Father knew a lot of famous people. I remember one time, geez, I'm trying to remember who it was. It wasn't John Wayne, because that was before my time, but let's just say it was. Somebody came to one of the parties in Cuernavaca, and I said, pardon me? Who was it? Oh, no, that was a queen. Oh, yeah, that's different. The, the, uh, no, but somebody would came to, Co to the, in Cuernavaca where those parties used to be. And we said, oh, this is Father Watson. And they said, oh, nice to meet you. Where is John Wayne? <laughs> But I know that when I first went to Mexico, I took care of Jose Luis group for a little while. Reinhardt was responsible for that group when he was going to Germany. And I was four years ordained, and now I'm 32 years ordained. And on my fourth anniversary, I had all planned to go and buy galletas in the Pueblo and to have a little party for my anniversary with that group of kids. And after I bought the galletas, which was no easy task for a gabacho who can hardly speak Spanish, you know, and, uh, but I got them, and suddenly a message came from Puerto Vaca that Father Watson wanted to see me immediately. And I sent the message back, I just bought galletas, and we're going to have a party. I can't come to Cuernavaca right now. And the message came back, Father Watson wants to see you immediately. <laughs> and I said, I can't. I bought these galletas, it's my foundation. And then they came back and they said, it's about a queen. <laughs> about a queen. <laughs> so anyway, in any case, I had to go and call him, and he said, just come to Cuernavaca. <laughs> what happened was, it was the, the uh, 
last queen of Italy. I believe she was Belgian, married to the last king. I forget all the names of the European hierarchy, but I do remember our own in the United States. But the, the Belgian, she was a Belgian family and she was married to the uh, the last king of Italy, and then they had to leave Italy, and she was, her name was Marie José something. But, Savoy. But there I was, a little nothing priest, four years ordained, suddenly having dinner with Marie José Savoy, the last queen of Italy. You know, <laughs> anyway, but this is the kind of people that Father attracted because of the credibility of his person and because of the credibility of, of his work. So that was really a nice example that you gave, but there were a lot of people like that over the years, really amazing, you know, and to Father's great credit. Yes, Susan. My name is Susan Hamill Joyce, and I got involved with NPH and Friends four and a half years ago. So I, I'm speaking for the people who never did get to meet Father Wasson. But the fact that I'm here today, when I've just moved my family and have boxes unpacked and client deadlines looming and a mother who's ill and a father and a husband with work and a son who broke his thumb, let me just tell you, um, the fact that I'm here is because you all are living Father Watson's spirit. And you've taught me some of what he stood for. And I'm here this weekend to listen and to learn. But I'll tell you three things I have picked up in my uh, almost five years involvement now. One is the this value of unconditional love. And as a parent, I know it firsthand. But when I heard Father Rick's story this morning, all I could think of, well, that's exactly what any dad would do. He would get, you know, get off the bulldozer and go and take care of your son. And that's what, uh, that's what really sets this organization apart, is unconditional love. The second thing I've learned was um, something Alex Daniels taught me. He's out in Los Angeles and he's busier than busy with little children and a career in uh, the entertainment industry. But he always told me that Father Wasson has a way, had a way of getting you to do things you didn't know you wanted to do. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think everyone could probably tell many stories of that. And the one for me was four and a half years ago when my best friend Claire Topp said she wanted to take me out to lunch and talk to me about why she kept going to all these strange exotic places all the time, Nicaragua and El Salvador. And, and she sat down and told me the story of Father Wasson and uh, how it all began and how with, with unconditional love anything is possible. And even though I was on two other boards and working full time with kids, I said, okay. <laughs> so the third piece that I picked up from Father Wasson is um, legacy, is the practical nature of what he did. Um, you all are not a bunch of people who are just sitting around thinking good thoughts and, and you know, holding hands and singing kumbaya. You are practical, purpose-driven uh, entrepreneurs. And I've always wondered with other international aid organizations who showed the picture of the little kid, you know, starving and then shows them all cleaned up, I always wondered, well, what did you do with them after you gave them a shower and a meal? And with NPH, I know what you do. It's a family, and it's a family I'm delighted to be a part of and honored to be a part of, and I'm really happy to be here and, and just to learn. And if there's anything I can do, because Father Rick said, what, what are we going to do to carry on Father Watson's legacy? Thank you, Susan. And your mention of uh, Alex Daniels, again, uh, another prominent person, highlights for me the humility of Father Wasson, because this is another obedience, an obedience to humility, uh, a disavowal of self-importance, a disavowal of having the attention on you, a disavowal of it having to go your way, but of being of service, of the leader as the servant. 
Now, that was Father Watson's way. Now, when he was convinced of something, nothing could budge him from that. So the, the, the humility of service does not necessarily mean wishy-washy or you have no spine. But Father Watson was never devoted to making himself famous or important or powerful. And when he fought like a mad dog, and he could, for a position that he was convinced of, it was for the common good. And uh, his, his, his base was fully servant-based. And this was the choice of our Lord. Our, our Lord came into this world uh, poor, obedient, and chaste. Chaste means not weighed down by all the things that make you heavy and can't move. You stay free in service obedient to what God wanted him to do, poor and simple, no pretensions, no diplomas, nothing huge that makes you credible. It's your heart that makes you credible. It's the way that our Lord chose to come into this world. It's the image of leadership that he gave his apostles by washing their feet and telling them clearly, you're here to serve. Father Wesson carried it out. It made him believable, even when his kowtowing with all kinds of very powerful and important people could have changed his head. It didn't. He stayed at the service. This is one of our obedience. Our obedience is we have to be obedient to our role as service, that we are servants, we are humble, and we, we strive only for what is good for all. Thank you.